medical law, the discipline that uh, I teach here at LSE, has conventionally been quite interested in issues to do with human reproduction, with end-of-life issues, and with some other ethical issues that come up uh, in relation to medical treatment, as well as some more black letter law issues such as clinical negligence, uh, for example. But there has until recently, I think, been comparatively little scrutiny by uh, academic lawyers of medicines regulations. Um, and I think that's a pity because I think actually the regulation of medicines raises, as well as some practical and scientific issues, some really quite big ethical questions. Clinical trials, for example, um, are raise really difficult issues about the consent of people taking part in those trials. What you do with the fact that you can't tell people who are taking part in trials exactly what's going to happen to them because the point of research is you don't know. You don't know if this medicine is going to have unacceptable side effects, which makes informed consent obviously a big issue. And in recent years, there's been an enormous amount of interest in data and whether or not pharmaceutical companies are disclosing all of the data they hold about trials and about medicines. And so I think there are bigger issues than just, is a medicine safe enough to have a marketing authorisation? The people who sell the medicines uh, are not necessarily the best people to be producing evidence as to safety and efficacy uh, in order to license that medicine. So um, drug companies uh, employ bodies to carry out clinical trials for them, but they have a very clear vested interest in those clinical trials showing that the medicine works. So um, it's certainly, I think, a plausible idea that you might want some kind of public agency which was independent and objective, evaluating medicines. There have been some really important moves and more moves are underway to, to try to gain access to all data because data is critical here. So um, there's already a duty to register clinical trials before you start them. So you can't make inconvenient trials go away altogether. There's a register and there's a, a, a now a move to make compulsory the registration of all of the data of trials. So again, you can't just hide them. So those teeth are uh, being, um, being used, and I think increasingly used effectively, though we're not there yet. But I think there has been tremendous pressure placed uh, on pharmaceutical companies about the hiding of data. What is it that we want these companies to be doing, and how can we make sure we, we, we get them to do it? You have to design regulations which, in a sense, propel people to behave in the way you think they ought to behave. Uh, so if you think uh, pharmaceutical companies should publish all of their data, you have regulations which tell them that they have to. Um, so I do think regulation can be used as quite an effective tool. But I also think we should take responsibility for regulation. So there, there is a provision which suggests that uh, in licensing a new medicine, um, we don't have to think that it's actually better than any existing medicines. And it just has to be safe enough uh, and effective enough to, to gain a licensing. Uh, a marketing authorization. Now, in some ways, you could hold that piece of um, that piece of regulation responsible for what's known as the growth of Me Too drugs, and these are medicines that are essentially very similar to existing medicines. Now, it's clearly much more profitable for a drug company to make another statin because we know the market is huge and we know that these sorts of drugs are, are, are profitable than it is to investigate some entirely new compound to treat something where the chances of success in that uh, drug discovery are much less. Um, but we don't need to prove that a statin, a new statin, is better than an old statin, just that it works. So you could say the fact that you don't need to prove improvement on existing medicines is culpable in, in this picture of increasing numbers of Me Too drugs. So rather than just saying, well, it's a shame that drug companies seem to be interested in producing me Too drugs, we should say, well, how are we designing our regulations in, in order, in a sense, to incentivise that?